little awkward. One in the prizes up at the top. Meanwhile, for Azul, few energy, but does end up playing a lot. <laughs> Usually when you think of control decks, they don't play that many, but Azul has 15 energies <laughs> in this list. So seeing three, that's uh, that seems pretty standard, I guess. Uh, one less than most Lugias. Yes, and uh, that is that is weird to see, as John has also just prized none of his energies with his 16 count. <laughs> I guess one important thing is uh, only two Lugia Beasts are on the list, one in the prizes. Yep, that could be a little bit awkward finding that in the opening turns. But let's go ahead and see the first one here as we have the fist bump in Azul GG. We'll start things off. Starting with that Snorlax in the active spot, has that Gormandize ability, able to draw until you have seven cards in your hand, but then your turn ends. But that is one of the best cards for these control archetypes. Yep, and we see Azul already. I'm going to focus on that Gormandize. A lot of useless cards for a Snorlax, but you know what? <laughs> they get you three additional cards, and that's really the name of the game. You just have to continue to draw through the deck until you find the right pieces. You can loop some pretty great scenarios and close John out. Galar Mine is the stadium of choice for Azul in this deck. It adds two retreat costs to every Pokemon, so really just trying to strand things up. And John starting things off with a Quick Ball and an Archaeops. Yeah, you think about the switching effects that Lugia players have. It's typically that one bird catcher, uh, and, and we don't see that right now. Uh, bird keeper, excuse me. So, yeah, just uh, none in the list here for John. So when it comes to retreating, uh, it's going to be uh, an uphill climb. The Galar Mine could be in effect as maybe those lost vacuums are used elsewhere, and you're basically attacking with whatever's active. Yeah, uh, and it, it's going to put a lot of pressure on those resources for John throughout the game. So. Against a control deck, do you kind of just go for it, or do you want to sit back and plan out your game? There's there's some different strategies that you can see. You can implore the uh, the the double Luminion strategy and just loop your energies together. If they're never on the board, then you can't be um, you can't see that cry of destruction occur. But we've also seen players just go very aggressive. Maybe you smell blood in the water. If, I mean, if, Z if Zul doesn't find another Pokemon, I'm going to go aggressive pretty soon. That That is true. <laughs> <laughs> Second quick ball with another Archeops. So this is looking like a picture perfect turn one so far. And Azul has some stuff to do. You got seven cards in hand. Yeah, John. I think the only issue here for John now is that he's, he's got a Manaphy stuck in the active spot, and although it's one of the better attackers in the deck with that 20 damage that you can uh, deal, I, I think we're going to try to get out of the active spot pretty soon. And one important thing to note, too, is there is no stadiums in John's list, so really uh, a lot of pressure is going on those lost back games. Yep. John's in a bit of a pickle. I think the the state the supporter that we see here is just that Marnie. Typically, when you use a Marnie, you're trying to do it in combination uh, with a knockout on a Snorlax so that you leave your opponent without that Gormandized hand. Hey, there's always that uh, option of just Azul not drawing another basic Pokemon. That, that could definitely be a thing. But yeah, I think John just needs to keep uh, pushing at this point. He's got like cards like Radiant Charizard in hand. You don't want to play that down too early. Just a, an awkward Pokemon gets stuck in the active spot, similarly to this Manaphy. So might just see that Marnie anyways and uh, see if he can get closer to that turn two summoning star. And there it is. Both players shuffle their hands to the bottom of the deck. John is drawing five cards, as well drawing four. Evolution Incense for next turn, so... Lugia V-Star is looming, and it's going to be up to Azul to see if uh, you can get some other basic Pokemon out. And I think we see a Yuvatal. Yep, we see. Looks like a pretty solid hands for both these players. Uh, John will have a little bit to do next turn, but he's going to go ahead and pass over to Azul, who uh, does find that Ice Q as the top deck. Colors' experiment to start things off, and it, it's pretty crazy how Colors' experiment as a supporter has just evolved throughout the meta. Uh, it was really just used in Lost Box decks, fuel your Lost Zone, but in a lot of these slower decks, it's just, it's raw card advantage. Yeah, you're just looking to see as many cards as possible, and sure enough, uh, throwing away cards when you're a control deck, sometimes it's good. You just need to thin out, and it doesn't matter if you see them in the discard or the Lost Zone. Uh, we found the cards we needed. Looks like a lot of ball search in the five cards here with the Colrus 2 Quick Ball and that Hisuian Heavy Ball. Yep, being able to thin down the hand when you have Gormandize available is usually pretty solid, but it looks like Azul 
already has a lot of what he wants because we're not going for that second Snorlax anytime soon. It's going to the Lost Zone. And here is that Heavy Ball. Now gets to check the prizes. And this is honestly one of the better things in Control Decks is, yeah, if I can see my prizes, <laughs> the game's going to be much easier. There, there are so <laughs> many cards to keep track of in a deck like this. And sure enough, you see him go into the pad and going to write down all of these cards here. When you do draw, draw prizes, it is important to uh, find the right ones, and sometimes you do have to use some of your supporter to help out with that as well. It'll be interesting to see if the Manaphy is taken. Uh, uh, John does play a uh, Raikou, but it's not really going to be used in this match too much. Uh, but might as well have it in the hand. Just going to go ahead and add that Pokemon in there and... Curious to see what else is set up on the bench from this point. Uh, you don't want to go too aggressively and play down all of your stuff, but uh, it's, it, you do need to continue to draw up with the Gorman dies. Well, Quick Ball is going to help with that. Discarding an Ice Cube, not needed in this match. Uh, one of the worst cards. <laughs> <laughs> He's a great card, just not here. <laughs> that is a much better card. That's a great card. Uh, Radiant Greninja to the hand. This is how the deck just cycles through, and honestly, why you're playing 15 energy. Uh, yeah, you <laughs> find you find the energies at the right time. You're never worried about prizing them, as we've seen so often with control players, just needing to continue to chain together attacks, and they're running out of them. Go ahead and make them your draw engine with that Radiant Greninja there, and uh, it helps you burn through the deck a little quicker, too. We do see a wash energy in hand, so concealed cards could be an option. But depending on what you draw, could limit your Gorman dies. It's always best to have more information. Yep, sure enough, finds another quick ball here. So going to continue to thin down a little bit now. And we do see that first uh, Cry of Destruction, Evital, played down onto the bench there. That is going to be a pivotal card in the matchup, just being able to remove those special energy cards. It is John's entire deck. <laughs> he plays <laughs> he plays 16 energies. All of them are, are special. So he's, uh, when you can remove those, especially when you've got that Galar Mine in play too, it just makes it so difficult for John to perform attacks. Yeah, we also saw off of the concealed cards that Sydney supporter uh, really being able to pick apart the hand of your opponents, especially if they are playing special energies. And uh, it could be really detrimental depending on which energies John has in hand later on. We'll see if that ever comes into play there. We have seen that be uh, pretty disastrous from time to time. As uh, you're just trying to hold on to those resources or you're using that Luminion chain and you just accidentally draw into the energies and uh, maybe you don't want to play down to that Oranguru or... Uh, some players don't even feature it at this point, but we do see that in John's list, so maybe can play around that. Azul ending the turn drawing five cards with that Gorman dies, and those were a pretty good five cards. I think I saw Cape of Toughness, Twin Energy, Colorist Experiment, all you really need. John going to start things off here with that Evolution Incense, though, so we'll be able to grab Lugia V-Star. There's two Archeops in the discard already, and finally we're going to start getting things going this turn two here. Yeah, we see that second evolution incense just brought that other Archeops up, trying to thin down a little more here. Should see the summoning star, and with the Luminions already played down, maybe the chain does start to commence, and uh, we see that slower approach, as it does look like Azul has a, a fairly solid setup. I don't think we're going to sneak a win out anytime soon. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Azul has been in this position before against Lugia. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, he, he's, he has won a lot of games. He's, he, he's <laughs> nine and two at this tournament so far. Luminous Sign grabbing a supporter from the deck for John here. He's eyeing down that Professor's Research. Can go another Marnie. You have an energy in hand, but most likely can attach it. Yep, when you're not losing too many resources, go ahead and get the hand as large as possible. You did see your opponent lose that Sydney, so maybe you're not thinking about that card coming down. Uh, in the next couple turns. All right, the gang is here for John. Double Archaeops on the bench. Primal Turbo is now ready to spread the energy and spread the love. Big fan of love here. We'll see uh, where these energies do go. It's a bit awkward with the Manaphy down. We might just see that big retreat with the Galar Mine and then try to work some additional energies onto that Luminion. 
Yeah, I do believe the one capture energy is in hand for John, so you can attach that to the Luminion Primal Turbo, couple energy to that Manaphy, and you get that three retreat off. But that is three energy down, and Azul, that's really all you're counting. Yep, yeah, that's good. <laughs> I don't have to worry about those. And uh, you just start counting the cries of destruction with when these energies do eventually stick. Ops not to, oh no, had two capture in hand. We see the draw here, a couple double turbos, I think, in the hand. That, that could is be awkward. Yeah. Oh, thankfully, oh. one more still remained in the deck. <laughs> could imagine that being a disaster for John if he just drew into all of them and had to lose two different energies there. Well, there is the retreat, Luminion V to the active spot. And now Aqua Return can do 120 damage and shuffle the Luminion and all the energy back in the deck. You bring up the Luminion, rinse, repeat for next turn, hopefully. Hey, I'm back. <laughs> did, <laughs> did I miss anything? Cleaning up the board state a little bit here, but this is the strategy against control that John tries to implement. We're going to have to see if Azul can kind of counteract it. And one of those ways is Thornton Snorlax, right? Yeah, you can definitely sneak some Pokemon into play here and take big knockouts uh, when you are when you work in that thumping Snore, 180 damage. Uh, it's definitely a great way to remove that Aluminion and just get a different Pokemon into the active spot. It doesn't look like the Galar Mine is going to be moving anytime soon. And honestly, if John doesn't have two Luminion to keep this loop going, it's going to be a lot harder for him to actually conserve these resources. We'll Azul. see if Azul has the, the cards to do that right now. It looks like he was in between that boss's orders and the second Sydney. Going to go ahead and bring that Lugia in the active spot. And when you've got a bunch of uh, Evital, that is exactly where you want Lugia. Go ahead and take knockouts. It's going to cost you a lot of energies. This is... <laughs> Rough. Uh, Lugia takes four energy to attack, and now it also takes four energy to retreat. Ooh, yep. Uh, I think I'd rather it just attack then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. More Yvitol hitting the bench, double turbo energy on one, Cape of Toughness on the other, and there we see a Gormandize to restock the hand yet again. And while it may not be flashy, it sure is good at what it does in Azul's deck. Yep, this is a, a big turn for John to potentially find a card like that Lost Vacuum. If the Galar Mine was moved, we know that that second double turbo energy is in hand, along with some others like that Powerful and the V-Guard. So if you could retreat for just that one special energy and start to chain together the Luminions once more, that would be fantastic. First Primal Turbo eyeing down that Speed Lightning and Capture Energy the least helpful energy in the deck as of right now. Yep, at this point you're not worried about dealing additional damage. You can't really uh, think about Stoutland just yet. A lot of these Pokemon are going to have uh, some higher end hit points in the active spot. But maybe you could sneak some prizes on a Pokemon like Manaphy later on. There we see Capture Energy and Speed Lightning to the Lugia. John has decisions to make now. That double turbo in hand, you can attach it, attack. You can uh, primal turbo to the active and just attack, and it's look, looking like uh, that's what's going to happen. And we're going to start seeing some crying. From who? Uh, <laughs> probably both players, honestly. <laughs> yeah, <I'm>, uh, <laughs> I, th I think Azul has some happy tears coming. Yeah, this is a... Uh, <laughs> Uh, obviously, John has to do this in this situation. Uh, having at least four energies down means that the Cry of Destruction didn't remove everything. Uh, you could see that maybe the double turbo would have been a fine as far as the math uh, damage, but losing all three energies just hurts so much more. Hey, there is a chance this Marnie can just stick Azul with nothing and no more Snorlax to Gormandize out of it. Uh, Going to be pretty important four cards here. Has that one double turbo already in play? So you have something to do next turn. John just going to continue to thin here. Did find that second Luminion V. Uh, he's going to hold that in the hand there for the following turns. And would love to be able to reestablish the chain, but you know that Azul sitting there with that double turbo energy is thinking differently. John really just trying to play to his outs after Azul bosses orders up that Lugia V-Star. And there we see the knockout on Snorlax. One prize taken for John, and this Yvetal is coming up. What 
Oh. Oh, no. This actually happened in my, my game on stream. Uh, if you take your prize, basically, uh, before announcing your May effect on the attack, you won't be discarding the stadium. Oh. Yep. So John took his prize quickly, and it was like, oh, yeah, let's get rid of the stadium. That is a great point to bring up. Yeah, I, th I think a lot of people would miss that, and myself included. And I'm like, why is that stadium not gone? Because that is a important card. But uh, yep, just uh, skipped over that. And we're going to hold on to that Kalarmai for an additional turn. That could be a lot more energy cards that John is going to have to uh, use now in this spot. Yeah, that is a huge mistake here. And honestly, it's... It is that. It's just a mistake. It's a May effect. You have to announce it. You have to declare it. Yep. Next time, I definitely think that John will throw that Galar mine <laughs> off of the table <laughs> and then draw his prize card. Yeah, in my instance, I even waited until like a little bit for, before I drew a card and yep. didn't want to do it. So I was like, okay. <laughs> well, well uh, looks like the strategy from uh, both these players is starting to. Uh, reveal itself here as four Cry of Destruction Evits All from Celebrations are out and the energies are disappearing as we see that Speed Lightning and two powerful energies gone. John's going to have to continue the, the good fight, but when you start looking at the, the math here, he's only taken one prize card. And he's down, what, five energies at this point? Listen. <laughs> I'm listening. Listen. It's all right. Azul did concealed cards, nothing. So you just got to hope. Play to your outs that Azul has nothing in hand. Okay. As of right now, that's what's true. If, there, <laughs> if there's no double turbo energy or uh, a, a second energy to go on with these uh, Cry of Destruction Evitol, you got nothing to worry about. <laughs> so we're we're going to be sitting pretty. So uh, John's just going to fight the good fight here. Fourth energy is that Aurora energy. John now re-powering up this Lugia <laughs> will discard that Galar Mine with Tempest Dive. Great and choice, John. See, it didn't matter. It didn't matter at all. Well, we're going to get a read from Azul now. He does have two scoop up net in hand, but unfortunately, he tossed away one of those Snorlax, and you only play two Gormandise in the list, so not having access to a Pokemon like that when you do run into a oh, hand like no. this is definitely awkward. Double scoop up net, l bosses orders, Galar mine in a lost city and a lost vacuum. Uh, that's that's not a good hand. That that I don't think that that does it. And this is a situation that you do not want to be in right now. Radiant Greninja was promoted. It's it does make sense because, of course, if you did find the top deck energy, you could just reuse that ability. Perhaps if you don't find the the double turbo uh, or twin to go along with it. This Manaphy has been eaten a little too good. Uh, three retreat yet again, <laughs> thanks to that Galar Mine and Boss's Orders bringing it up. Yeah, you got to take advantage of these restaurants in Orlando. They're beautiful. They, they are. And packed. Yes. Well, uh, now the decision to be made is uh, who's going to hang out with Manaphy in the active spot and... <laughs> Manaphy! <laughs> we'll watch him run away. Yeah, can we just see the, the boys get together? I don't know. That is kind of risky. There are still two powerful energies left in the deck, and if I saw Stoutland come out and take additional prizes, I'd be I'd be worried. Listen, we gotta we gotta get risky sometimes, you know. Okay. Not yet, though. <laughs> you would just to the active spot. Uh, maybe we'll see a lost vacuum, just getting rid of a card in the hand for that choice belt. Yeah, <laughs> definitely yeah. worried about that choice There's a lost John. <laughs> Got to make sure to put that in the lost zone. Yeah, we'll see if that gets corrected. <laughs> of course, it's not. <laughs> it will not, not matter at all. Super <laughs> relevant, <laughs> but but we do need to read the card. And here is a quick ball, and that's one way we haven't talked about it. Getting rid of the stadium is that Pumpkaboo. That's true. With its yeah. pumpkin pit ability. Yep, that's a, a nice addition to the deck. Of course, it's uh, usually been to get rid of those Path to the Peaks, but sure enough, you, you do need to get rid of that Galar Mine. Energies are running short here. Well, there is that Pumpkaboo to the hand, and that means only just <laughs> one energy will be able to be used to retreat this Manaphy now, and I think there's only four left in deck for the last search I think John did. Yep, yeah, we'll take oh, no, a, a little, little more. more. Like yeah. Almost six, so... Um, Having that one to retreat means that 
You'll still have plenty for potential Luminion Chain later on if that is where we end up going here. But I think I think John might just play the odds at this point and uh, oh yeah, say you know what <laughs> you you can't find energies. I'm just gonna make this a four four turn game. Well, there is that Primal Turbo fetching that Aurora energy, and here we have the retreat. With no energy in hand, you have to bring up that Lugia. And there is that Tempest Dive yet again. What is Azul, Azul draw? Cape of Toughness, oh. that's not going to do it. Oh, he can style out and get that on the Manaphy or no. You know what? doesn't matter at this point. <laughs> Everything's getting knocked out by Lugia. <laughs> we don't have time to be cute. We'll see if the energy is eventually found. But this is it the issue. It needs to be this turn. Oh, no. Oh, we should have been more specific. Cards. It needs to be a twin or double. No. No supporter. Nothing at all. There's no way to draw extra cards as of right now throughout the deck for Azul. Honestly, I, I Quick ball might could be... find the Eldegoss, but you're still going to be a turn behind. I think after Azul counts the resources John has left, he's going to scoop this game up. See if there's a way to potentially continue to draw with uh, the supporter that you find. There's no supporter. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's nothing? Yeah, uh, he drew Quick Ball Reggie, Reggie Lucky with the concealed cards. Oh, no, you have Eldegoss. Okay. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah he's, got the, he's got the Chorus Experiment to dig a little further now. So we'll see if that's going to be uh, the choice here. Do you go for something like Mill Tank as well? Uh, and try to buy an extra We almost turn need a wall at this stage, yeah. We can definitely see some merit to that. Slowing down and, and doing some plays with boss's orders don't make sense without the Galar Mind. It's going to have to be finding the energies and targeting them once more. Hoping that maybe your opponent did prize an energy, an important one, uh, as their last prize potentially, as we do know that almost all the energies will be used and to make this Lugia. Here is that Eldegoss V grabbing that Colorus' experiment, but this is definitely a desperation play from Ooh, Azul because that turbo. has... A uh, two prizer in play now, so just a uh, gust effect and more energy will seal the game. Yep. That's a good point. This is something that Azul didn't want to do, but absolutely had to to stay in the game. You already see that Cape of Toughness coming down there to try to help out. Get some additional hit points on there. Let's remove some energies and see what his, uh, John has to close out. Has been saving oh, those them. powerful energies. Has the boss's orders in hand. You're going to see the Ultra Ball here just to check the resources left. He's got the powerful energy. He's got the boss's orders. He's going to be able to There's deal 260 uh, to close things out here on that Eldegoss. And, and John woo. sneaking out a big game one here in a matchup that could have gone very poorly. Taking half the time of the round for that win. This is going to put a ton of pressure on Azul going into games two and potentially game three. Uh, control, its one weakness is game three. Yeah, you, you think about the awkwardness that Sander has seen time and time again as he's always uh, one of the, the smartest players in the room, continually finds the right cards to bring and gets himself into these situations, and then time is his worst enemy. And it looks like that could be a situation that Azul finds himself in. He has built in some escape routes. He's got that uh, Snorlax, of course, that he can just get aggressive with at times. But you need to get yourself into a situation where you can start working on the rises. You can't go as aggressive. You're not going to outpace Lugia. Oh, not at all. And uh, I believe time is everyone's enemy. Uh, In the long run, yeah. Especially speaking uh, <laughs> to the 2006 uh, Orlando <laughs> Regional Champion. <laughs> hey, you know what? That, that, guy, that guy did win with time not being a factor. <laughs> More like father time. That's true. Yeah, yeah that, that guy's catching up quick. Well, we'll see if, uh, if these guys have anything left in the tank here. As, uh, you know that John would love to start with a Pokemon that is relevant to his setup. Even Luminion at this point would be great, but oh Ooh. no, it's prized. The, the chain is broken. Was, this is going to be a little bit of a struggle of a game, especially the second Lugia V-Star in the prizes as well again. Yeah, mm. Azul is going to start things off, though, with a capture energy for Snorlax. Of course. Finding that Snorlax early on, you got to find those cards in order to get the setup with control. That is the big weakness of these decks early on, is you often have to sacrifice a couple Pokemon, a couple prize cards in order to get where you're going. I Thankfully, guess finds that Snorlax early. One thing that is going to be different about this is John will have access to both Lost Vacuums for this game. 
Uh, we didn't see that come up at all, but definitely would have helped saving some of those energies with that Galar mine. Capture energy is going to come down on that Lugia V, and he's going to get some information here that he doesn't have the Luminion chain to work with this time around. It's a little bit awkward, especially when you think that would be the go-to strategy when you're trying to elongate this game too. And uh, you don't want to get aggressive with that Lugia V because you could see the writing on the wall if you just lose your energies four times. Yeah, uh, Marnie and Prey doesn't work every time. That is true. Now looking at the hand here for John, has another Lugia V, don't really want to bench that. Uh, you have Archeops, but is there a way to discard some? And granted, do you even have a supporter? We'll see if we get that information shortly. What Pokemon is going to be beneficial here? Maybe a Pokemon like that Oranguru could help out with uh, the awkwardness of some of those openers. But yeah, this kind of makes sense too. If you just want to make sure that you're not getting bossed into yeah. some awkward situations. Just leave your board as Lugia, Archeops, and uh, maybe a Luminion. Now, I did get a glimpse. I saw the Serena. It is a way to discard Archeops, draw some cards. You can bring up the Eldegoss, maybe kind of work around that Snorlax, but that's not really what you want to do. You want to be pretty aggressive. Yeah, I think maybe if you, your opponent already had the Galar Mine, you could make that work against them, but let's, let's just draw some cards and see where we're going. Only two cards here, though. And there is a few energy that Pumpkaboo that you do not. No, there's, four, there's energy? Oh, four energy and a pumpkin. Oh, no. You got to <laughs> discard the pumpkin, too. Yep. Every energy is very important at this stage. Does end up finding a couple oh, ball no. search, so we that see, would help out. Yeah. We see a Sydney in hand, but <laughs> Azul just straight away played the Peonia. So. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it, it could be great, but also <laughs> you're not really in a position to lock your opponent out. Yeah, let, let's take both these Ice Q and put them in the prizes. Well, we'll <laughs> never see them. <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're not working on that strategy this time around. What an awkward situation for John looking at this hand. Says, oh, yeah. Well, if I want to play Pokemon, I need to use uh, the ball search, but I'm going to discard a lot of energies, and that's basically what my opponent wants me to do. Maybe we take it slow. Re read a couple times, go to a library. Okay. And yeah, and you know what? The good old library has uh, definitely helped out sometimes. Double Turbo and Cape of Toughness go down on the Utah. What you want to see if you're Azul in this Lugia matchup. Gormandized for two cards, passed the turn, but found the Chorus's experiment. Yep, and the scoop up net as well. So if this Snorlax isn't dealt with and John does play a slower game, could work in that Evital earlier than expected. Maybe move some of these manual attachments. Is there any merit? Like, granted, you're going to have to discard a few energies, but you could go. Luminion boss the Yuvatal, get one Archeops, KO it. The resource battle here is wild, trying to figure out how to do this correctly. So Ultra Ball used for likely you can get the Archeop. Lugia oh, yeah, V-Star, and then maybe the Quick Ball just goes for the Luminion Marnie. Hope to get the knockout and just play with that single Archeops battle. You can knock out the, Gorm the Gormandai Snorlax in combination with the Marnie, preserve those resources, and leave your opponent on a four-card hand. Looks like, like we're going like to play a little riskier here, maybe work in that supporter and try to find the Lugia V-Star. It's going to be so rough, though. Only one in the deck, one in the prizes. Mm -hmm. uh, but there is two Archeops down, and Luminion will grab Marnie. And <laughs> these are going to be a huge five cards from John here. Yeah, this does make sense in terms of uh, the longevity of the game. You're trying to make sure that when your opponent does use Cry of Destruction, that you're going to have uh, the resources to go and uh, go ahead and find multiple ener energies uh, with uh, two Archeops there. And you're not going to be waiting to have at least one in hand and play that manual attachment. That just plays into the Sydney. <gasps> Touch find the Ultra Ball. Wow. Big Insane. find. Insane. Ultra Ball discarding a few Pokemon that you do not want to be brought up in the active spot. Going to find that Lugia V-Star. And here we have Summoning Star, double Archeops onto the bench. And now John is cooking. Yeah, you would think that John lost game one the way that this is going. This is the <laughs> most aggressive that you could play the, the Lugia deck. But sure enough, this is so perfect because you already 
got that Marnie down on the, the, the Gorman dies. You're taking the knockout. Your opponent just has to work in this Evital strategy, but they've got four cards. They still need to get set up. Oh, no. Looking at the hand, too, for Azul. There's a Starly, which can search for some <laughs> cards, but if you're using that attack, you're not going to be cryo destructioning. That's true. And uh, make it maybe float up as well. That's a, those aren't game-winning strats, though. Four energy now on that Lugia V-Star in the active. Tempest Dive taking the knockout on that Gormandize Snorlax, and it's big top deck for Azul here. Finds boss's orders, but oh, is that a Galar Mine too? Maybe, maybe there's a stall strategy that could be employed. Is it worth it to retreat to the Starly bosses with the Galar Mine, then kind of set up for next turn? Yeah. I think that's what Azul's doing. Got to look for cards in this situation. Using these resources, maybe uh, the not as anticipated. And even. The Pumpkaboo is gone. That is one big aspect of this. We're going to have a bird off here. Keen Eye, I believe. Search the deck for two trainers? No, just two any cards. I think right? it's just two cards, yeah. yeah. It's a pretty solid Pokemon. We've seen it in combination with Bird Keeper uh, a while back, just so that you could have avoid needing to actually play energies onto this, as it doesn't really feel like a good use of a, of a twin energy. But sure enough, in this situation, it's exactly what Azul needs. I think Azul found the Thornton, so we might see like Thornton, the Eldegoss, and the Snorlax to Gormandize. Those are shenanigans right there. Meanwhile, action is back on. John has that Archaeops in the active spot. You can start attacking with it. Does take the knockout on the Starly, but does have that three retreat thanks to the Galar Mine. John is going to contemplate some options here. <laughs> You're holding on to that, that Stoutland, and you see a Starly in the active. You start to, start to wonder if you could do it, but... Uh, with all these energies already committed to the Lugia, it does feel a little weird. Surely Stoutland sees Starly. Say that five times fast. I will not. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned my limitations. Here is that first Primal Turbo from John. You see both Double Turbo available in the deck. First one to the active, uh, not just yet. Mm -mm. Yeah, it's tricky. You you do see that you do have that three retreat cost that you're going to have to work in now with the Galar Mind. So the attachment from hand or just finding an additional energy here would uh, be able to get this Pokemon moved out of the active and then get that Luminion potentially attacking. But I don't even think you want to attack with the Luminion because you're not going to work in the chain anytime soon. Well, here we see that Speed Lightning gets discarded with that double turbo retreating to that Luminion, so we will see the Aqua return. Taking the knockout on Starly, Lugia is going to get promoted to the active spot. And again, it is up to Azul to try to figure out something. We know Thornton Snorlax is going to come into play, but it's taking a turn off. Yep. Deciding to use the Luminion as opposed to the Lugia, and also just without with that decision, you don't have to decide if you're going to get rid of the Galar Mind, and there's potential for that to be working against Azul in a situation like this, as now we see the Thornton is the way to get the Gormandized Pokemon into the active, as opposed to finding a retreat situation. But sure enough, plays the entire hand down, drawing seven cards. Starly putting in work here. Snorlax, leave some for the rest of us. Come on. Man is hungry. <laughs> John still in a good position, though, uh, with that Thornton Snorlax. That meant Cry Destruction was not used, so this Lukia Vsar still has all of its energies, can attack and get rid of that stadium. Yep, John is holding on to the boss's orders Ooh. right now. He's going to cash in on that. He's already seen what I believe now is three of those uh, dual energies, and uh, he's going to remove the Galar Mine in combination with that, so hoping to put... Azul in a similar position where he could not find the twin or the double turbo now, but we do see that in the hand for Azul here. Unfortunately, no hand disruption uh, because you had to play that boss's orders. And so Azul having a good grip of cards to work with, and it's just up to him if he can find a line to just starve John of these resources. It's going to grow a little more here. We see three energies, a quick ball and a potential scoop up net, I believe with the Colrus experiment. 
Going to yep. hold on to a couple of those resources. Just make sure you got some uh, some options. One, one thing we haven't really seen a lot this game is that Radiant Greninja. I feel like we're going to find it right now. Quick ball for it. This will allow you to dig through your deck even more without having to end your turn with Snorlax. Yep. Just trying to uh, grow the hand here. And your opponent did use that boss's orders, but it doesn't mean that they uh, don't have a Marnie for the following turn. So would love to dodge that soon and just continue to build. And sure does find that second Cry of Destruction Evital. That's going to be fantastic for chaining these Pokemon together. There is the double turbo energy on the active Cry Destruction, getting rid of three energy off that Lugia V-Star. John does have those Archeops, so can charge it up straight away. But again, how many energy will John have left? We have seen a couple of those double turbos already used to full effect, but still plenty of Aurora energy and powerful, I believe, hanging out in the deck. One double turbo left as well. This Evolution Incense really just trying to get more information before you actually commit to anything. Yeah, might as well grab that Archeops there. We're going to see a little more discarding too. Just thinning down, trying to make sure that all these uh, top decks are going to be a little more live and does find that Luminion V2 that can get that Marnie. We know that the hand grew a little larger than John was uh, liking, so going to go ahead and try to thin that down a little more too. Get rid of this energy, put uh, Azul in that same situation. And again, great sequencing from John here. Able to get the energies out with Primal Turbo before playing this Marnie down. You don't want to draw into the energies that you want to search for. And again, you have an option. Uh, well, like, never mind. Uh, I was about to say Aqua Return can take a knockout, but that Cape of Toughness is putting in a ton of work. Going to force this Lugia to actually attack this turn. Yeah, there, there honestly just might be enough energies to get the job done with Lugia, and if you aren't able to, then we, we will see that uh, the Desperation Retreat at some point. And there we have it, Marnie disrupting Azul's hand after a couple turns of free draw. Lost John. vacuum in the five for John. It's the first time he's actually seen just a copy of that card <laughs> in well, this match so I far. I do play those. It does also find another copy of Boss's Orders in the hand, too. So if there is something that Azul tries to build up, can target that down once more. Maybe piece together the last three prize cards here. We will see at least one more this turn with the Lugia V-Star using Tempest Dive. A couple more evolution Pokemon to the hand for John, just thinning out those cards that you do not want to draw next turn. And with that, is going to have the knockout on Evatol after a few cards go everywhere. <laughs> I think for Azul at this stage, uh, discarding the energies uh, is almost not going to work at this stage. You're going to need to start working in the boss's orders and try to slow down your opponent. Uh, maybe get a Pokemon that won't be able to take a knockout uh, into the active spot. And that, that's just asking for so many pieces. You're going to need Cape of Toughness, the boss's orders, the Galar Mind. And, and you're going to have to cry of destruction the energies away from the Lugia. Quick ball here to start things off. Looking for that Eldegoss V, potentially another Yuvatal, but the hand for Azul is a little lackluster. There's that twin energy to go along with the Galar Mine, like you were saying, but that is it. Let's see if Quick Ball ends up going for. A card like that Eldegoss, or if it has, if it can find one, something different at this stage, and it is going to be the Desperation Eldegoss. It does not feel good when your opponent is at two prize cards, but that is the situation that he's in here. John is uh, got to be smiling right now. I think I've got, the, I've actually got the boss's orders. <laughs> he doesn't know. <laughs> keep it cool. Keep it cool. <laughs> Don't want to give any info away to your opponent, especially when it's one of the best players in the game right now. Yep. This is a, a calculated risk uh, if Azul were to do that. And <laughs> wow. <laughs> Not calculated, calculated anymore. Uh, Sydney looking at the hand. Oh. <laughs> sees John has that boss's orders. All right, I can't play this Eldegoss down. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is not going to work. Yep. That is unfortunate there. Azul would have loved to remove some of those special energies. Maybe there would be a situation where you could cry of destruction enough. But I think we're going to see the writing soon if, uh, if John has enough energies to close out. Yeah, we see the double turbo in there. I think there's 
at six or seven energies, that should be uh, enough if, if the boss's orders combination doesn't happen. And you still have double turbo and Aurora left in the deck, so you can't attack with Aqua Return. And here is four energy on this Lugia V-Star yet again. We'll be able to take the knockout, put John down to one prize card, and Azul has been really struggling this entire match, it seems like. Yeah, sometimes control just draws like this, and I, I think that just speaks to the pressure that Lugia V-Star can put on at points, but I, I think we saw the best setup from Azul. It just wasn't the right cards off of Gormandias and can, found all of the Evital that he needed, but had none of the energies. Yeah, we, we mentioned uh, uh, game threes were the weakness for control, but so is hand disruption. Uh, Marnie putting in a ton of work this match. Game twos are also, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> not a friend. We're yeah, going to we, try to get some information, see what the energy counts are. I think he sees 11 of the 16 right now, and that's not, that's not a, a pleasant sight when your opponent has one prize left. Mm -mm. Now, Azul does have a twin, so I think we might see the Thornton into Yuvatal twin and then just hope the last energy's prize, maybe? Uh, this is such an awkward position right now. Yeah, the play has to involve forcing retreat, removing the energies. The Galar Mine is there. But we know there's three energies in the deck for John here. Yep, and I think Azul does too, because <laughs> math, basic math says only, only one energy could hide in the prizes, not four. Two plus two is four. Quick maths. Yep, we're going to see the removal of that Galar Mine retreat and Lugia V-Star up into the active. Big knockout there. John Ang going to close things out here in round 12. John looking for that first regional win and is inching ever so closer to it. Now 10-1-1, one, and one, looking to make top eight. Yeah, the confidence level of this young man is unbelievable. I mean, of course, uh, he's always had that within him, but he didn't have all, all the results to back it up. And continually throughout the course of this year has found himself in these situations where he's making top eight, making top four, trying to make championship status and win one of these finals. And while Azul started off day one amazingly, was first seed, second seed going into day two, has taken two losses back to back in these rounds to Ian and now John. Yeah, it's gonna put him at uh, three losses now on uh, on the tournament so far. So a little more work gonna be needed from Azul there, but this is the deck that could, that could definitely do it. It surprised a lot of players. The issue is that uh, information gets out when you get into day two, and you're, you're playing against a lot of people that are going to make sure to download as much of that information as possible. And that is the risk of playing a deck like this uh, control archetype that a lot of these top players kind of gravitated towards for this tournament. Uh, Azul's whole testing group basically played it, and it paid off. I think four of them made day two with this exact list. Yeah, it's it's funny because we've seen them playing Kyogre for so long now <laughs> that we're just used to seeing them take a bunch of prize cards, and they're like, "Hey, we can we can do this too. We've uh, we've played Pokemon long enough that we can uh, we can work in some control and uh, get the job done." But John really just showed the 